Texas is sitting at number 48 in the recruiting rankings. And I'm not worried one bit. We're going to lay out a path to show how Texas can finish within the top 10 easily. And guess who else isn't worried? My next guest, Jerry Hamilton from Inside Texas. Jerry, we've been doing this way too long to fret about rankings in the month of May. The Longhorns have only three commitments, and that's why they're ranked at number 48 right now. But there are some big names on the board. And one of the biggest is Jarrett Gibson, the five-star running back at IMG Academy. Now, he was back at Miami over the weekend, Jerry. And so much throughout the spring, we talk about Jarek trending towards Texas. Do you still feel this way or are things, you know, maybe get slipping from Texas? I still feel like it's trending Texas headed into the June official visits. Uh, that relationship with the Shard Choice is a is a really tight one. Um, and it's interesting. It's so similar, Josh, to the Cedric Baxter recruitment a year mm. ago, uh, the number one running back in the country out of Edgewater in Orlando. Uh, Miami was actually the team that ended up giving Texas the, the biggest run there at the end before Baxter announced. A lot of people thought A&M. We're talking about some other schools, but it was actually Miami. Um, and, and I think it's pretty much the same with Jarrett Gibson. Look, Headed into the spring, it was Texas and then Tennessee. But uh, mm -hmm. you can't overlook the couple of visits to Miami this spring. Uh, a couple other Texas targets from IMG. One for sure, Jaden Jackson's been on campus at Miami as well. Uh, but, yeah, I think Tashard Choice, the relationship there is still the difference right now. But like we said, these June visits, official visits, are huge and they have to play out. Um, I don't think Texas is feeling worried right now about Jarrett Gibson, but we'll see. All right, let's go into the state of Texas. Five-star wide receiver Micah Hudson. Look at the recruiting prediction machine. 49.7% for Texas, 43.5% for Texas Tech. Very tight race. Jerry, I get on here with Sam, and we talk Micah Hudson, and the people in the comments say, hey, there's nothing to the Texas Tech talk. It's all Texas. But the recruiting prediction machine shows a much tighter race. Are the te Is Texas Tech really in it? What's your take on his recruitment? Well, first off, there's a there's a shortage of tortillas in Lubbock at the thought of Micah Hudson going to Texas Tech, right? I mean, Kroger's are sold out; they're ready to throw tortillas, right? I mean, but look, yeah, Texas Tech's legitimate. Josh, he has two official visits set right now: Texas Tech the ninth through eleventh, and Texas the twenty third through twenty fifth. Uh, there's an appeal with Texas Tech uh, for Micah Hudson. If you talk to the people close to him, does that mean they're the favorite over Texas? I'm not. I'm not willing to go out on that limb. I think the June official visits are going to be huge here. He, and this is recruitment that'll probably go into December. Uh, it could happen before his senior year, but right now I think it's headed in uh, to December. Uh, but look, there's a Joey McGuire has a lot of energy. You know, Josh, for those of us who have covered him for more than a decade at Cedar Hill, he brings energy. He brings excitement. Um, and you see that. Joseph Jonah Janya, a kid that was mm -hmm. at Georgia, he really likes Texas Tech. Uh, he likes Joey McGuire. So, yeah, there's something to the Texas Tech and Micah Hudson. Are we sitting here saying he's going to end up at Texas Tech? No, we're not. But I think people are kind of foolish if they don't think Tech is a legitimate threat in the Hudson recruitment, especially considering he has two official visits set, and that's one of them. All right. Well, the people in the comment section, Texas fans in the comment section, Jerry Hamilton is the one <laughs> saying that Texas Tech, Tech has a legit shot. Now, who wants to catch passes from Arch Manning? That's the big question. We talked about Micah Hudson, but besides Hudson, who else is a priority for the Longhorns at wide receiver? That's a great question, Josh. They've really, because Chris Jackson got to Austin late, they've used the spring evaluation period for him to get out on the road and really evaluate wide receiver because he didn't really get a chance to do that, obviously getting in late after the NFL season for the Jaguars. But look, Parker Livingstone, uh, the on three industry ranking four star out of uh, Lovejoy up in the Dallas Fort Worth area, he's coming in June 23rd through 25th. Uh, I, I think he has become a priority for Texas. Texas would love to get Bryant Wesco mm. uh, from Midlothian on campus, but right now there's not an official visit scheduled. Uh, and, you know, he's been at Oklahoma lean for a long time, but LSU's really making a move there. Yeah. Uh, then you look, Texas is trying to get Jordan Anderson, uh, the wide receiver out of the Newport Beach area in California, Oregon commitment. 
Uh, they're trying to get him on campus in June, and he's saying he's going to set an official visit in June. JoJo Stone out of Langston Hughes in the Atlanta area, LSU commitment, he's coming in June 16th through 18th. Then look, Ryan Wingo, the five-star, one of the best in the country, he's coming in on the 16th through 18th. Can Texas beat out Georgia, Missouri? I don't know. It seems like an uphill climb, but he has been on campus twice before when he was younger. And Texas kind of snuck in there and scheduled this official visit when it was known he'd visit Georgia and Missouri. So I think Texas has given themselves a lot of shots on goal here. The question is what three guys are going to pull. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, a lot of top wide receivers are going to want to come and play with Arch Manning. But, hey, we'll see how the wide receiver board sorts itself well, and, out. And Josh, I should have I, I mentioned, Josh, I mean, Look, the reality is when you get deeper into this in June and these kids start getting close to decisions and Sarkeesian makes a sell, Xavier Worthy with a good season's going pro. A.D. Right. Mitchell, the Georgia transfer with a good season's going pro. Jordington Whitting's, Whittington's a senior. So there's going to be a lot of playing time to sell there with Texas along with having a pretty good quarterback room. All right, let's move on to five-star edge Colin Simmons. He's going to take his officials this summer. And throughout the spring, it's really felt like LSU surging. They rolled out the red carpet for him at the spring game. But he's from Duncanville High School in Texas. There's a hometown team. Jerry, are people sleeping on Texas when it comes to Colin Simmons? I, I think a little bit. I don't think anymore. I think they were for a while. And, and look, the, here's the reality of this one. I, I think I've been to Duncanville, I don't know, 15 times on football and basketball in the last two years. Here's the reality. He loves LSU. Mm -hmm. uh, Colin Simmons loves LSU. He likes the vibe down there. He feels very comfortable at LSU. He likes the, uh, the defensive staff there. He likes what Harold Perkins was able to do as a freshman in Baton Rouge. So there's a lot of things with LSU that are legitimate with Colin Simmons. I think Texas has made a, 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 a made up a lot of ground in the spring. The unofficial visit was arguably his best unofficial visit this spring. Mm -hmm. uh, look, his mom, his bro little brother, they all play into this recruitment in a big way. I don't think he's going far from home. I'll be surprised if he doesn't officially visit Texas June 23rd through 25th. In fact, I would be surprised if Colin doesn't kind of release that official visit schedule here in the next few days as we get closer to June 2nd, 4th, that first official weekend in June. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Texas and L LSU are the top two. I think Georgia, Florida, they're all right there. Uh, but I do think this ultimately could come down to Texas versus LSU. Um, and, and look, Texas has closed the gap, but I still think LSU is a slight favorite headed into these official visits. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think sometimes early on in these recruitments, when, when recruits visit everybody in the country, that's early. As it goes on, location plays into, into it. And, you know, Texas, LSU, those seem like it's going to come down to those two. But Colin Simmons, hey, he can punch his ticket anywhere he wants in the country. So we'll see what happens. Uh, another five-star trending towards Texas. And this is why we're not worried where Texas is ranked right now. Because five-star Kobe Black is trending heavily towards Texas, 89% on the recruiting prediction machine. Texas has one DB committed right now. What would an ideal defensive back class look like for Texas in 24? Yeah, that's a great question. I think they're going to sign four or five guys. The likelihood is five. Um, Kobe Black, obviously five-star, is one of those guys trending to Texas. Then you look, one of the big battles is Corey and Gibson out of Lancaster. Texas had a pretty considerable lead uh, headed into the spring, but Clemson has more than cut into that lead. He's been the Clemson twice. He went for an unofficial visit, was offered. And Clemson is his dream school, Corey and Gibson were talking about at Lancaster. Went back for the spring game. Then he's got the June 2nd through 4th official visit in Clemson. He's scheduled to be at Texas the 23rd through 25th, his birthday weekend. Um, but that that's an interesting battle that Texas led big for. And now it's 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 become much closer, even to the point of Clemson possibly having a lead headed in the June. Then you look at Jordan Johnson Rebel, the safety out of mm -hmm. Fort Worth, originally from Brewer High School at IMG now. I think Texas has had a lead there for a while. Him and Corey Gibson are really close. Uh, I think that one is trending towards Texas, especially with Alabama visit not happening the 9th through 11th. He's going to the mid instead. He's got USC the first weekend in June, Michigan the 9th through 11th, Ohio State the 16th through 18th. TCU's trying in that one as well. Then you have the sleeper, the kind of the wild card DB for me out there, the top right guys is Wardell Mack out of mm -hmm. John Eric, New Orleans. He's visiting Florida officially and Texas officially for sure in June. Um, LSU's pushing 
you know, for him not to commit before the season and then take that visit during the season, which I think is smart with LSU, what they're doing with their in-state guys. Uh, but look, Terry Joseph, a lot of connections in that area. Obviously, Corey Raymond has a lot of connections for Florida. The interesting thing there, I think Texas has the edge over Florida as far as the schools competing with LSU. So he's really the wild card. Uh, and the other second wild card is Eli Bowen. Look, we kind of uh, on three and inside Texas broke that news last week. He's going to officially visit Texas June 8th, 16th through 18th. His brother, obviously, Peyton Bowens, uh, is a freshman safety up at Oklahoma. Texas really likes Eli Bowen, and they really like his coverage skills and that natural ability. Then Texas also has a couple of safeties, uh, Miles Davis from Converse Judson and Joshua Lair from Fort Bend Marshall coming in June 16th through 18th. So, again, it's to me, it's about shots on goal. We wrote on Inside Texas last week, Josh. It's why nobody's really concerned for Texas fans. 26 five-star, four-stars coming in in the month of June for official visits. Seven of those are defensive backs. Yeah, and we clearly laid out a pathway where Texas can finish top 10. I mean, every every prospect we talked about was nearly a five-star in this conversation. So screw top 10. Last year, <laughs> Texas finished number three. Can they repeat with a top five or even top three finish in 2024? Yeah, it's very interesting because Steve Sarkeesian's played the long game, Josh, since he's mm -hmm. been here. There's been no panic in recruiting. They haven't moved off top targets. Uh, that really worked for them in the 2022 class. They got some help when Mario Cristobal took the Miami job. Kelvin Bank, Cam Williams flipped to Texas. Last year, Texas did the same thing, though. They were very patient, um, and they, they did not move to plan Bs and take commitments early. And they ought, certainly have not done that this year. They have three kids committed right now. I'm only convinced two of them end up in the class, the quarterback, Trey Owens, and the, and the, and the punter, Michael Kern, out of St. Thomas Aquinas. So they are playing the long game again. And if they don't finish with a top 10 class, I'll be surprised. They just have too many shots on goal at highly ranked guys. We know how this game goes. The question's going to be, can they finish with a third straight top five class? They think they're going to be really good on the field this year. Yeah. Uh, if that happens and you bump the 10 wins, then certainly you're going to have that type of momentum. But the five-star prospects obviously decide where this class goes. Is it 10? Is it 7? Is it 4? Um, and that's what's going to come down to with Colin Simmons. Kobe Black, some of the guys, Micah Hudson, we've talked about. Texas is going to have to win at least half of those battles to get into that top five. Yeah, the star power is all over the board. Texas just needs to win 10 games on the field. I think you're right. 10 games puts them easily in that top five, top yeah. three space. But Texas has to go out and win the ball games first. All right, Jerry Hamilton from Inside Texas. Thanks for joining the Inside Scoop. Thank you for watching. Make sure you smash that subscribe button for me and remember to check out all the videos on the On3 YouTube page.